Uh, Keith Shockley, producer, DJ, started back in our, I was in that high school, our youth center. Um, and this was around 73, 74. And from there, it just took off. It, our youth center, then from our youth center to my mom's basement, and then from my mom's basement, that's when things started to really happen. My brother found this kid at a, at a, a Delphi Thursday night throwdown. He made this announcement. And he came back to me and said, Keith, I heard this kid. His voice is incredible. But I was talking to him. We, we, might, we might find an MC because we never had an MC. So we might have an MC. And so I met the kid. And it was actually Chucky e. D at the time. So from then, Chuck became my MC. At that time, the DJ scene was huge influence. Um, my boy, a plumber, Grandmaster Flowers, um, Donnie Dance Master, and all of them, they was, uh, they was huge influence. And then the other kids that we really came to like um, was the Disco Twins, Reggie and Robert. Man, the Disco Twins came out with the Birthers. And, and they was actually designed for nightclubs, which was designed by Richard Long. Um, he put, the, he had them in um, the garage, I, but the twins had them do that for him and they would bring this, these two massive, the size of this room, speakers. And it was incredible. And when they did a park jam and oof, they know, them my, them my dudes, them my dudes. So we came up in the sound system era of, you know, um, of DJing. You wasn't a DJ if you didn't have your own system. Not like today, like, you know, but then you had to have your own, and you had to have a loud system. If you wasn't no bass, it, they, you nah, get out of here. You couldn't come in with two bass bottoms and thought you was doing something, you know? So if you didn't have a, a huge sound system, uh, you, you couldn't hang out in the streets, man, because all we had was mainly like either roller rinks or parks. You know, back then you didn't need a permit. You just rolled up and set up and just got down. You got down till the lights went out. Nobody complained, you know, real, no real issues. We kept the issues down. So it, it was cool, you know, and from then that's another way to get known in how, you know, how we was doing things, you know? So we were set up while they were playing the park league. So you, you already had people at the parks coming in and we'll set up in the other section of the park where it was, it was close, you could hear it. And it was, you know, man, that was, those days was heavy, man. It was like, nobody complained. You didn't have to go to the town to get an ordinance. And you just set up and just got down. And that kind of pushed us into, you know, keeping that sound system culture going. The sound system was always the basis of DJing in the streets. Now we had the club DJs, um, that was a whole nother politic. <laughs> that was a whole nother politic. But as far as mobile DJs, it was like anybody could be a mobile DJ. So that was cool, but everybody couldn't get down in the clubs. We used to use guitar head amps to mix. So we had uh, a PV, 450 guitar amp. I got a picture of me DJing with it. It's crazy. And we didn't really have no real headphone system. So you had to cue with putting your ear close to the needle and hearing it and spinning it back and then holding it. And then and then there was a, a, a like a quarter of a turn before the for the belt-driven turntable caught up to each other. So you would have to spin it back just enough, mainly give you like a quarter of a turn before everything caught up to exactly 33 and a third. Because you know, it had to wind up. So that's why at that time we had to figure out the timing and all that. Almost like how people do scratching and beat juggling out. So we was kind of doing that, didn't really know it was that until Flash, <laughs> until, until Flash decided. It was the, uh, all the start just pushing it. And I think that like a lot of the DJs in Manhattan or the city, mostly like the New York area, kind of pushed that mobile, that mobile DJ world hard. 
are hard. We've always embraced technology. Me, my brother, uh, Chuck and us, we've always embraced technology because we always liked the new thing. Um, and then from then, we would figure out how to incorporate that into DJing. From that technology, then two turntables and a microphone wasn't enough. So now, Flash was the first one to come out with the beatbox and rocking it with the turntables and then had his MCs on top of it. That started the new revolution of technology. So from then, when we saw that, my brother always forward thinking and we had the radio show going on, he picked up the Roland CR8000, which was a rhythm, another rhythm box. It was more like a updated, going into electronic world, which, you know, the new electronic rhythms coming in. So when we had that going on, I'm playing that with, with, with records and people are like, oh my God, what is this? So it became a whole new world of people. So then all of a sudden, if my brother didn't put more stuff on our plate, Roland made the 303 bass line. So then I started making bass lines with the drum, with the drum machine and then incorporating that with the DJ and with the records. So that started the oh, whole, for us, that's all. We was only, I, I, I can contest, we was the only one that was rocking it. If you wasn't into doing electronic music, DJing, we had the bass box and bass line and killing it. So that was, you know, our thing coming up. And that got me into really making beats hard for local rap groups. My good friend, <laughs> uh, Jeff Kwan from Canal Audio had connected me with PV. So Jeff said, hey Keith, man, I got this company. They, uh, they want to, you know, they looking for somebody to help them brand their stuff in the DJ world. And I was like, eh. I said, well, Jeff, who are they? He says, PV. I said, really? He said, I said, he said, yeah. I said, okay. I said, I used to use their product, you know, back in the day. So like I told you earlier, I like, we had the column speakers. Um, I was DJing with their guitar head amp. I got a picture of that. So I was like, yo, that might be a cool, might be a cool thing. We've always knew PV had good stuff. One of the biggest things that we used as, as time went on was their power amps. You know, we knew that we had the CS 800 and a 400. So we knew how good that was. And they was the, the next best power amp other than going to a Crown or a Macintosh that we could afford. Threw a lot of parties, bought amps, and their amp was reliable. From that world, from like, I'll say late 70s all the way through the 80s, um, we, relied, we relied on PV. I always try to stay with true brands that I really like and I really use. And then from then, it started building and I started bringing more DJs to the table, more stuff like that. They started to get their little niche in and me and Chris started branching out and I'm starting to reach over to people in the West Coast and coming back, we're doing these different little seminars and DJ little experiences with, with people just building them from a grassroots kind of thing. Kind of like rebranding them to the new world that didn't really know who they were. We started picking up a little momentum, a little steam, getting a little reputation and starting, people starting to know like, yo, they got some really good stuff. I said, they always did. Hey, I'm Keith Shockley from Public Enemy and you can check out PV at AmericanMusical.com.